Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Dorado. So Dorado is a C++-based, libtorch-based base caller that we are currently working on. Uh, we've released a preview version on GitHub, um, which I'll be talking about um, later. So the first thing I want to talk about, though, is what actually is a base caller. So I think to a lot of people, base calling is kind of a dark art. Um, it's kind of something that, you know, those guys at ONT do, and it's a bit of a mystery. And that's not really what we want. We want people, we want the community to understand a little bit, as much as possible, about what base calling actually does. So at some very sort of fundamental, at some naive level, you could say, well, a base caller is something that takes, it takes data from sensors in an instrument and tr translates that into nucleotides. And yeah, that's true. But in a more practical sense, a base caller to us, when we at ONT say base caller, we mean a lot more than that. So a base caller, it needs to interact with the sequencer. It needs to pull data off a sequencer. And then it needs to do some pre-processing. So any, any base caller, uh, not just ONT base callers from other instrument vendors as well, they're going to do some pre-processing on the data. That's, that's a given. Um, in the case of ONT signals, that involves scaling and shifting um, data, for example. And that means taking into, uh, bit streams coming off the sensors and converting them into current levels, picoampere current levels. Then there's a process, for example, called signal chunking. So our reads are variable length, but for performance reasons, we like to operate in fixed length chunks. And so there's a process called signal chunking where we split that signal up into chunks, and then we have to worry about that later. We pass the signal into a machine learning algorithm. The machine learning algorithm, typically nowadays we use deep learning models, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, this outputs, uh, doesn't output nucleotides, it outputs a probability distribution, which needs to pass, be passed into yet another piece of software called a decoder. Decoder outputs Q-scores and nucleotides, but these are, all, these are all have been chunked, so we've got to worry about that again, and there's another component called a stitcher, and it takes these chunks, combines them together, um, and then you've got base called reads, which can go into other parts of a pipeline, a barcode demultiplexer, straight to a writer, into a, a liner, mod base caller, we can do a whole bunch of things. That's when it actually gets interesting. My point for the slide is to emphasize that a, a, um, a base caller is a very complicated piece of software. And if any one of these boxes is slow, if it's underperforming, you're in trouble. Your whole, your whole pipeline is slow at that point. And that presents a lot of challenges. So what kind of challenges are we talking about? Well, streaming data is hard for, for a start. So a Promethean sequencer outputs raw data at a rate of around one gigabyte a second. Anything you do with a gigabyte a second is hard. So even if you just want to read a gigabyte a second and write it to disk, that's not trivial. And we want to do a bunch more stuff than just writing it to disk. So that's, that in itself presents a challenge. Typically, tasks that you might think of as being simple, like, um, like scaling a signal, like I mentioned earlier, that's really just mul multiplying an integer by a floating point number. Um, that can be CPU or I.O. bound quite easily. Neural networks are way too intensive, way, way too compute intensive for CPUs, which means we need to deploy those on GPUs. That adds heterogeneity to the system. That, that adds an extra layer of complexity. Um, Decoders themselves are complicated. There's different ways of doing decoding. Uh, that's accuracy performance trade-offs that we need to think about. And many parts of the system are out of our control. So we allow our customers to run on whatever hardware they want to. Um, that's something that we're f philosophically very much committed to, but it does present challenges because we have no way of testing every possible hardware combination that a, uh, you know, that a customer is going to run on. And, um, that introduces challenges. Finally, performance enhancements can reduce re code readability. So I'm a performance guy. I like making things fast, and, but I also make it like making software which is readable and beautiful and people can really interact with it and extend it. Those two things are often, those two goals are often diametrically in opposition to one another. So what are our design goals for Dorado? We want to be technically close to Bonito. So Bonito, um, as you guys know, is um, our neural net uh, training software. It's a pretty good base caller in its own right, good, good inference performance now. Um, but it's what we internally use for our research. That Bonita is how we develop our models. And so we want to be technically very close to it in, 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 in how it's designed. And the reason 
fundamentally is we want to reduce transfer time from research to production. If our research team comes up with a new algorithm, a new way of doing base coding, some, something good, and they say, you know, this is good, we think customers can use this, every day that, that they've said that, that we haven't got it in customers' hands, that's a waste of a perfectly good day. So a design goal for Dorado is to make that transition easier by being, by being as similar as possible in code. We want it to be high performance, we want it to be open source and user extensible. It's no good something being open source, but it's so, the code is so confusing and hard to understand that no one can actually do anything with it. And there's a few projects like that. Yeah, they're technically open source, but good luck trying to modify them. Multi-OS, multi-platform, we want to support CUDA. We do support CUDA and Metal, so Metal is the uh, API for programming Apple GPUs. Pipeline based and deep learning from the ground up. You know, I spoke about how machine learning algorithms don't have to be deep learning. Typically, though, the way we see the future going for the foreseeable future, we're going to be using deep learning for um, training, uh, for developing new, for developing base coders. So, what design choices have we made? Probably the most fundamental design choice is we're very much dependent on LibTorch. LibTorch is the C++ backend to PyTorch. Um, very famous as a um, very famous as a um, neural network training tool, but it's also great. It's got a fantastic C++ API. It's a great linear algebra library. I'll show a bit of that later. Um, and so we depend um, very much on it. It's, part, it's baked into Dorado that we use um, Torch. C++ 20. We want to use C++ for performance reasons, and we want to use the latest standard, the very full featured um, standard. Um, Open source, as I mentioned, we want community scrutiny and we want contributions. If any of you want to contribute to a base caller, then uh, we're very happy to accept uh, additions. Lightweight dependencies, we want compilation to be easy. We want people to be able to easily install and build. If you've got uh, an open source tool where someone finds it very hard to compile, very hard to build, eh, that's not great because people tend not to use tools that they can't, co that they can't quickly build. And pod five, um, as George mentioned in the previous talk, and Pod5 uh, resolves a lot of our I.O. issues that we encountered with Fast5. And so from day one, if you check out Dorado now, it's using Pod5. I want to talk a little bit about why LibTorch, because it's one of the most... Uh, PyTorch is great. Pe loads of people use PyTorch for, for deep learning. But LibTorch is, I think, one of the biggest, you know, one of the best kept secrets in the whole C++ uh, sort of linear algebra community. So this is code from Dorado and code from Bonito. Co Bonito is at the top. This is a function for calculating the median and the median absolute deviation. Um, in Python, uh, we use this in, in, in um, we use this for scaling and trimming uh, signal. And if you, and the bottom one is in C++ using libtorch in Dorado. And what is very obvious, even if you're not a C++ programmer, is that these are very similar functions. And so this is what I mean by reducing the, re the time from transferring from, re from research to production. And the nice thing about the bottom function, the Dorado one, this will run on CPU or GPU seamlessly. You don't need to think about it. If, if, that data, if the data um, the in, in your signal is in GPU, everything will be taken care of and you don't even need to think about it, which is saves a lot of development time and makes your life a lot easier, but it also makes the code a lot cleaner and nicer to read. So if you're interested in high-performance linear algebra, do check out LibTorch, I highly recommend it. So our feature status, as I mentioned, we've released a preview version. We've got CPU, GPU, and M1 uh, base calling currently working. Um, we output to SAM already. We've got a lot still to do, and you'll be seeing rolling updates on GitHub. Barcoding, duplex, uh, addition of Remora, multi-GPU, almost there, not quite. M1 and NVIDIA optimizations. We do support M1 and NVIDIA GPUs. However, we think there's a lot of performance we can squeeze out, so we're, you're going to be seeing it, this getting a lot faster over the coming weeks and months. Sequencing summaries also is a feature that we intend to add very soon. If there's any feature that's missing, if you try it out and you think, oh, it would be nice if they did this, don't be shy. Uh, you can file a GitHub issue or just email um, one of the devs and um, we will, can't promise we'll implement a feature, but we, we will take it very seriously. And yeah, you can try it by checking it out on GitHub. As I mentioned, it support, it's running on Mac, Linux, and Windows. If you've got an Apple M1 device, oh, we very much value your feedback because it should be quite a bit quicker on such a device. Um, NVIDIA GPUs, we support Volta and Later. Um, we know there are bugs. 
So we are releasing early. So if you find a bug, um, I, follow, I, you know, I don't want you to find a bug, but you probably will, um, or you possibly will. Uh, but do file issues if you find a bug, because that's why the, the purpose for us to release early is to get community feedback ASAP. That brings me to the end of my talk. <laughs>